Kia ora koutou. Welcome everyone. I'm Janice Mackay, your host, and I'm the Welcoming Communities Advisor for Ashburn and District Council. Joining me today is Kirsty Nash and Michelle Parkin. Hi everyone. Kirsty <laughs> is from Sidekick Chartered Accountants and she joins us today to cover business continuity planning and cash flow during uncertain times. Uh, Kirsty is open to answering your questions on those topics, including the wage subsidy. And she's joined by Michelle from Forsyth Bar to provide a brief market update and to answer your questions about KiwiSaver and more. Um, Kirsty is the Associate Director of Sidekick Ashburton and she grew up in Ashburton uh, and returned home after being overseas to start her own business. Uh, in London, she worked as a financial controller at Fortnum and Mason, and most recently in Samoa as a financial controller for the local supermarket group. Kirsty enjoys helping clients set and reach their goals to achieve the lifestyle they want. Michelle um, joined Forsyth Bar in Ashburton in 2019. Prior to this, she worked as an investment manager in the UK for over 20 years, which culminated in her setting up her own asset management company alongside a group of colleagues. She has extensive experience managing portfolios on behalf of clients during volatile times, just like this. Hmm. Michelle's personal disclosure statement is available to read on the Foresight Bar website, and the Summer KiwiSaver product disclosure statement is on summer.co.nz uh, if you want to check those out during the webinar or after. Please feel free to send your questions to the panellists either in the chat box or if you prefer your question to be anonymous, feel free to use the Q&A box. Throughout this webinar, we will be running some polls um, and those will be anonymous. So we'll pop them up during the course of the webinar and would really love you to uh, they're going to be multiple choice, um, so tick the boxes that apply to you and we'll all get a feel for who's here and um, what's relevant to you in, in your current situation. So I'll turn off my audio and video now and hand it over to you, Kirsty and Michelle. Cool, thank you, Janice. Um, Hi guys, thanks for joining us this morning. We really want a, a bit of an interactive um, session. Um, and our focus is we'll, we'll give a little bit of insight around um, what's happening in the sort of the business world as as a business owner but also an employee um, and um, and then any questions please fire them at us so obviously the term um, president times has been bashed around um, quite a lot lately so we are definitely in, in some different times and for a lot of us um, we haven't experienced um, such changes in the market or economy before. There had been the um, there has been market crashes before, but I think this is potentially quite different to anything. Um, it's a worldwide thing, so there's there's a lot of thing that's that's a, that is happening out there, and um, I, I believe the IRD have really come to the party for business owners. The wage subsidy scheme has been taken up very well um, if anything it's starting to finally get some some slack from who has applied so your your employer has most likely applied for you and have been using these funds to pay your wages now there's a lot of uh, changes through that how that's been happening um, from the start the, they keep rev revising the rules so businesses had to show a 30 percent loss or projected loss so and and that will continue that that ability to assess that will continue um, throughout the year some people might not show loss in the first month but could show it in the next six months um, so just just a few points that's happening at the moment the id um i've been quite relaxed around um, late payments um, and and remission from use of money interest so a lot of you may have tax coming due Soon, so I'd suggest you talk to your accountant around um, the new remissions that the IRD have released. They've also increased the, the provisional tax threshold, so potentially this coming financial year your, your tax threshold will increase, so you may not have as high or any tax um, owing. So that, that, there's some really cool things going on 
with the ID, but I won't give too many much more detail about that. I suggest that you talk to your accountant about some of the things that are happening here. But really, what, what we kind of want to talk today about is cash is king at the moment. Cash flow is really, really important. So it's something that we need to bear in mind is we're going to be starting to operate um, next week. Some of us are already operating. There's a statistic saying that about 60% of the mechanery folk is still working um, during the lockdown. So I'm not sure what that will move to post level three, um, but it'll be quite substantial, I'd say. Um, you may complete some work and, and, and fill out that work, but may not receive that income for four to six weeks. Um, so cash is going to be really, really important at the moment. So things like... Have you discussed a rent holiday with your, your, your landlord? Have you applied for the wage subsidy and how are you using that at the moment? Um, reviewing your payment terms with your, your current customers. Are you on seven day terms, 14 day terms? Are they the 20th of the month? Like these things are really critical, but the most important thing is communication. So actually talking to your clients and your customers around terms, your ability, because everyone's struggling here. Um, one thing Michelle and I did at the, at the beginning of lockdown is, and probably because we both wear financial caps, is we, we both reviewed our personal spending budget. Um, there were some cringes, Michelle, wasn't there? Certainly some cringes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we, we actually both set up um, no zero day. edges oh. and um, monitored our spending for the last year and we've been reviewing it. So, and a lot of you out there probably have done the same. And, and if you haven't, if you didn't do it at the beginning, you're probably starting to do it now. Um, I think you've, you've got to be realistic too, you know, like it's almost like a diet. You kid yourself that you're not eating that chocolate bar at lunchtime. Well, it's the same with the spending, you know, until you've got it on black and white in front of you. Um, you know, Lizzie's dairy appeared on my bank statement more times than, <laughs> than I realised. And when you start totting that up, three chicken and chips every lunchtime for however many months, it certainly adds up. So that's going to be one thing crossed off our list. But having said that, we were talking about spending locally, weren't we, Kirsty? Yeah, so we, we've been talking a lot recently about those of us that aren't affected financially in a, in a, in a great sum have hold a really important role to play in supporting local businesses. Um, and in fact, we all hold a really important role right now to support local businesses. One thing we talked about yesterday, Michelle, was going through everything you purchase and actually asking yourself, can this be purchased in Ashburton? And, and, and I'm sure a lot of us are spending out of town on, on many things and, and some things aren't available here, but that doesn't mean they can't be available. Um, so I think we need to be very conscious around where we shop and who we shop with. Um, but another, another flip side to that, so I might be contradicting myself, and we talked about this, Michelle, is saving. So a lot of people may have saved some money through this time, you know. So what will you do post lockdown? Will you continue those habits? Or, or are you desperate to go back to Lizzie's Dairy and get your chicken and chips? <laughs> Not my chicken and chips, I may hasten to add, my children. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, so there's, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of things happening at the moment and, and our behaviour is really, really, really crucial at this time. Um, Michelle, do you want to talk a bit about the market and then we'll chat about our experiences working from home and our business's ability to be... Yeah, certainly. So uh, the stock market's been pretty volatile, as, as you've probably all read in the headlines, and it's, it's very easy to sit around having breakfast and look at the... The, the, the headlines on your iPad or on if you're still the old-fashioned newspaper and you know it's, it's pretty frightening or it's been pretty frightening I mean markets fell um, quickly and, and and pretty deeply but they've also recovered quicker than any other time in history um, and I think the reason for that has been because central governments throughout the world have been supporting businesses so they're handing out money they're printing money and handing it out and so the stock market can see that actually some of these business businesses will be okay so I suppose that moves on to KiwiSaver and um, obviously most of us will be invested in KiwiSaver in some, in some format um, and um, some of you may potentially be wanting to use your KiwiSaver um, in order to buy a first house which uh, if you'd have looked at the values sort of a couple of months ago, a month or so ago, it could have been quite frightening. 
And I think what I want to reiterate is that um, you know, KiwiSaver is a long-term strategy unless you're coming up to retirement, but it, but it is a long-term strategy. And, and, and during volatile times, um, I think you've got to stick to your long-term plan. And it all depends on you as an individual. But, but I think one thing I've noticed here in New Zealand is the lack of understanding of, of KiwiSaver and investments. And I think there's a big gap of education there. Um, on our website, which is so uh, Forsyth Bar's KiwiSaver is Summer. So if you went to summer.co.nz and, and put your details in there, it will tell you what sort of fund you should be investing in depending on your current circumstances. So it's all down to age and stage. Are you young? Are you becoming near retirement? Are you looking to buy a first house? Have you got another 30 years till retirement? In which case that will all um, affect what, what sort of investments you should be looking at. And, and I think that's absolutely key. Um, and, and, you know, ring me. I'm happy to talk to people about investments. Have a look, use this time to educate yourself. You know, have a look at what you're invested in um, and, 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 and learn. Ultimately, sometimes KiwiSaver for most of us is, is the only form of savings that we've got. Um, and and people, the amount of people that come into my office and I'll say, what are you invested in? How has it performed? And what are, you, what are your charges? And people, they struggle to tell me which provider they're with, let alone what it's invested in. So, so my advice to you guys is, you know, have a look, use this time, print a statement off, call me if you've got any questions about, you know, it doesn't have to be with some, with, with any provider. And, and I can try and explain what sort of investments you're, 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 you're invested in and how that will perform. So basically the volatility we will probably see set to continue as we, as you know, the coronavirus rolls out. So yeah. Um, have you, can you think of anything, Kirsty? you can ask me? Yeah, I think, um, how many KiwiSavers, how many people are rolled in KiwiSaver, Michelle, in New Zealand? Is it about 2.2 million? So over half our population. And yeah. bearing in mind, we have a lot of children um, as a population that aren't, or a lot of elderly that haven't, decided to enroll because they don't see the benefits of their already in retirement. So most of the working force are involved in KiwiSaver. For most people, it will be their biggest asset outside their home. Exactly. And, and that, that one thing alone is critical to knowledge. So um, call Michelle, go on your website, talk to your bank or your, provi your KiwiSaver provider, wherever you get it from, and understand how, how it works, how, how to use it properly. Um, a lot of Kiwi savers have different models, high growth models. So you might be a younger investor and you're really aggressive. Um, a lot have conservative models. And, and I actually heard last week that someone was unable to complete a house purchase because the Kiwi saver had dropped in half um, from the market crash. And this happened post the original contract sign up. Now, when I went to buy my house with my Kiwi saver, I was told six months before I started to looking in the market to, rem to move my KiwiSaver from high growth to conservative. So I didn't lose any gains or loss. I didn't gain anything and I didn't lose anything. Um, so I knew exactly what my, my deposit was. And that one piece of advice I got from my, my local banker here was crucial to, to investing in a home. So I, I, being your, the second biggest investment you will hold outside your home and not having enough understanding of it is, is not really good enough. And I think we need to take some ownership there and, and understand it. Yep, I completely agree. And I mean, you know, people are, sometimes are afraid to ask the stupid questions. Listen, I always ask the stupid questions. So, you know, by all means come to me and, I, and I'll explain what, what you know, your, your fund does or what, what's in your fund and how it's likely to perform. Um, but you're absolutely right on the first time home thing, uh, Kirsty, because, you know, as soon as you are going out and looking for a house, potentially you could put an offer in. Therefore, you need to protect those funds and they need to be in cash, basically. Absolutely. Hey, Michelle, we've just had a question. Um, yeah. Should I be making voluntary contributions now while I'm not spending as much money? Yes. So um, I, if you can afford to um, make contributions during this difficult time so you've got a wage basically you know you've not been made unemployed now is a perfect time because what you're doing is what's called dollar cost averaging you're buying shares at lower prices than what you probably have in the past and that will give you a better return overall so absolutely if you can continue to make your contributions and increase them markets will recover well they have recovered somewhat mm. but it will recover long term stock market investment over the very long term outperforms all other form of investment 
So, you know, if you're in this and you're not looking to retire, so if you're coming up to retirement, then the question that the, 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 it might be slightly different. And again, wanting to buy a house, slightly different. But ultimately, most of us are in this for the long term. And if that's the case, yes, you know, um, continue to keep your contributions the same. And if you can increase them, brilliant. brilliant. Buying share at the moment, you know, on sale. Yeah, exactly. Um, Michelle, we've actually had uh, another excellent question and we talked about this yesterday. The announcement last night from the Treasury around dropping the amount of deposit, so LVR, is going to affect the, um, the KiwiSaver input. Oh, for a house, it's going to affect the KiwiSaver input or as I see it, it could be an advantage. So, so yes, we talked a bit about this last night, didn't we, Michelle, about how um, the Treasury um, have... Just, they haven't announced what it's going to be, but they're announcing that they will remove the LVR. Now, the LVR is the threshold or the deposit you need to have to, in order to buy a home. And there'll be uh, many of us on the chat who knew it was 5% one day. Um, it could have been 10%. It's now currently 20% for your own home and 30% for an investment home. They are looking to drop that. Now, the this can actually be an advantage, definitely can be an advantage. It's a great question. It can be an advantage that you have, um, your KiwiSaver is, effectively, the KiwiSaver has dropped, but the LVR dropped. They, you can, you've still got the ability to purchase a home. Now, Michelle, why do you think that they have um, announced that they're, they're looking to drop it? Well, I think just, well, one, because some people's KiwiSavers values will have dropped. Yeah. Um, and two, because they want to keep things moving. So the first thing, you know, people, potentially we could see a significant dip in the housing market if um, people decide to you know not stretch themselves and and, and enter the housing market um, for the first time and so by reducing um, those percentages 20% of a home is, is a significant deposit to have it, it, it sort of gets the wheels moving again and hopefully people that maybe I, mean, I don't know what they'll drop it to I've not read did you read overnight Kirsty what they have they said what they'll drop it to no, Let's say five percent. I mean, when I first bought my house in the UK, it was five percent, and we've done the same in, in England. We went up to twenty percent. You know, it, that's 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 a massive difference for somebody just starting out. And I think it's to keep everything that the government's doing, um, uh, and governments around the world, is to keep things moving, um, and by relaxing the rules. There is a flip side to that. You know, what you might end up with people that actually getting themselves into debt that can't afford it you know or, or, or potentially if you've got a 20 percent deposit to your house um your your your, your net debt payment. yeah, yeah your, your payments are are less yes um, so that it's a fine line and and the, it's the bank's responsibility to make sure that they're they're lending sensibly i mean back in in you know after the global financial crisis the beginning of the 2000s it you know banks were lending that were not lending sensibly and hence where this loan value ratios come in um, to try and tighten up who they lend to and how much they lend We've and got I think that, that comes back to a little bit to um, uh, another question that we have received Michelle is someone just asks us the templates that they can use to look at their spending so and I and I've answered personally and said yes but I will, I will announce that here is sorted.org Yes, that's what I was going to say. It's an incredible website, um, government initiative. It's got incredible budgeting tools. It's got mortgage tools. Um, it, it's got everything in there. So use that as a, as a starting point. Um, Interest.co.nz is also a, a really cool, informative tool. It can tell you um, like what the current interest rates are for home loans and more, um, and for saving and KiwiSaver and it's and it's also got some stuff around insurance providers. So I definitely think looking into those tools would be would be crucial. And right. Michelle, oh, sorry. Shall we go to a poll? Yeah, cool. Yeah, definitely. How do you get to a poll? <laughs> Janice is gonna pop it up on the screen. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Um just in the meantime, um Michelle how have you found working from home? Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and your, your, your company's ability to do it? Yeah, so, um, yeah, that, that was interesting. I've worked from home before, so my home office was already set up, so it was just a matter of, you know, basically moving, moving, to, moving to home and, and, and getting on the, on the server. Um, the, the, the IT department at Forsyth Bar have been awesome, actually. You know, they've sent equipment out to all those people that, that didn't have a screen or, you know, didn't have a, a reasonable sized screen because working off a laptop, small laptop screen is not ideal for, 
anything long term. Mm. Um, but, but I love it. I like to be able to peg my washing out in between phone calls. And um, the only the only downside I think is I, I've been working very long hours. You know, I get up at quarter to seven. I'm straight on the computer. Um, I go get a quick shower at eight o'clock. I'm back on the computer, and sometimes I can be sat on till late. So, um, and then you know, w- yesterday I didn't have a lunch hour. I didn't go for a walk. And, uh, I just worked all the way through. So that there is some downside to it. In that, you not know, establishing you know, good habits, really, isn't it? But yeah. it, it's a new, it's a new norm at the moment. So, yeah, I think um, so yeah, I can be you. from home for well, we did it before before level three was announced purely because we could, um, we're fully cloud-based and it's awesome to see our business model is robust. Um, but I, I definitely, and, and, and that's great, I, we can continue to do it, but I do miss that social contact, but it's good to know that we can we can work in both environments. Um, Michelle, I've just had a question, um, we'll do the poll soon, but we just had a question, what is the best fund type to be investing in now in KiwiSaver and should you switch funds temporarily? I'm early 40s with a plan to use the KiwiSaver to buy a home in the near future. Ooh, so sorry, did, did it say in what 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 funding are they currently? Um, I will ask what fund are you in currently? So so with with the KiwiSaver, um, if if you are at all looking to buy, um, it, I suppose that it's that time frame between soon. You know, is that soon 12 months? Is soon two years? Um, two or three years? Um, I think stock markets have recovered. It, at, the, at the point where you're looking to, you're going out and physically looking at houses, you need that money to be in cash. Um, yes, you might miss out on some further upside, but markets, again, it depends what you're invested in. Are you, is it a global fund? Is it a New Zealand fund? By all means, um, drop me an email, whoever that is afterwards, and I'm more than happy to have a chat with you on the phone. Um, you know, but if 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 you're in this for the longer term um you know in 40s you've still got what 25 years until you retire i think um, their intention here is to buy a home in the near future in the near future so again it would depend on well so my questions are what are you invested in now if it's mm-hmm. a balanced fund then i would continue to probably hold that i won't go any more aggressive if the near future is in the next few months, then I'd probably cash that up because we are going to see some volatility. There's no question about that. You know, we're, we're, we're over the worst of the coronavirus thing, but then we've got all these companies that are going to come out and report earnings for the last quarter. What, what, what's that going to be in? You know, for, for several months of that, they've been in lockdown. So some businesses will, you know, will have had zero revenue. So, so Michelle, they've uh, replied and said conservative. Move fund from balance to conservative before lockdown. Oh, well... Very good. Great move. Excellent. Yeah, yeah well done. Um, hey, we've so, got so some, cons- sorry to interrupt. We've got some poll um, questions. So um, what are your concerns slash fears as a business owner? Um, quite evidently, 43% voted workflow slash workload slowing down post lockdown, which is a very real fear that people are going to be quite conservative. And then and then the next one is making debt repayments. Now with that one at 29%, I suggest that you engage with your bank if you haven't already. Engage early is really critical. Keep them informed. The importance of engaging early is that they know where you're at and they, they are, most banks have come, to, if not all banks have come to the party around um, changing terms. Also what you'll need with bank is you'll need to be talking to your accountant to support any bank applications, cash flow forecasts, budgeting tools that are critical to um, releasing terms and then and then evenly is paying staff and keeping them employed um, workflow increasing ability to pay tax and pay suppliers just on the banks you know the the government are relying upon the banks to keep you know we're in a different situation to we were back in the global financial crisis the banks weren't the banks in New Zealand were, have always been much better than the rest of the world but you know the banks um, were not in a great space they're in a they're in much better space now um, and they're expected by the government to keep people afloat um, so talk to your banks they, they, they're there to help and and you know ultimately we're in a situation which n- none of us can be held responsible for you know yes. it's not our fault you've not mismanaged your business um, so, so go and talk to them. I think, you know, the, the, you, you, you could be pleasantly surprised. Yes, exactly. Now, the, the, the second question is, what are your concerns slash fears as an employee? And equally, um, equally 40% is 
keeping your job, partner losing job, paying home loan or house rent, and then followed by 20% um, are, none not, uh, are very confident in the job and 20% are not getting enough hours. So, so there's some real concerns about there about your, your job. There's some real concerns about your partner losing their job also and, and paying your home loan or rent. So we just talked about talking to your bank. That's really critical. And if you haven't done that, I suggest you do that as soon as possible. The bank are really, really flexible at the moment. So, so honestly, address that worry sooner rather than later. With your job, this is a question, open communication that you need to be having with your employer, okay? They'll be nervous too, or they might not be. And, and so have that conversation with them. And so you can, you can sort of iron out that fear. Um, we are in crazy times, Michelle, definitely. But as a region, we are probably pretty sheltered or guarded. I'm not saying we're going to be bulletproof, but um, we're a pretty robust little community. And um, we seem to get through most things. Do you agree? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah it is it's unprecedented times and 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 yeah i think you know people are taking uh, things on the shoulders and talk to people gosh you know it, it's you can become very isolated sat at home on your own and and you know these worries and and, and thoughts talk talk to um, talk to your family talk to your friends talk to your business colleagues um, it, it's really important. Mental health is going to be key coming out of this. I think we've got to support each other. And I think it's great, you know, coming from the UK where every town, you know, spreads into the next town. This we've, we've got this district of Ashburton where we're almost isolated from, from everybody else, you know, um, and, and we can support each other and we can so spend we love. We have our own little bubble, I think. <laughs> bubble, yeah. <laughs> um, Michelle, we've got another question. Um, what is the best use of my ex excess savings at the moment? Should I sit on it or pay off debt? And um, just before you have add your answer, um, we would need to see more of your um, personal budget and personal balance sheet to answer that question more accurately. But Michelle, um, what's your suggestion? Sit on it or pay off debt? Yeah, I mean, it, cash is, is cash is king. <laughs> <laughs> you know and in uncertain times having cash in the bank so it would we always say have an emergency fund you know you must it, despite what your assets are you must have cash in the bank in case things go you know not according to plan um and i don't know about you but these these i can i can only i can't multitask i've got questions coming up and <laughs> Do, I'll, I'll, Sorry. I'll put the questions. Don't you worry you about the questions, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So cash is king. Um, obviously, interest rates are now at quarter of a percent, or should I say, the OCR, the official cash rate, is at quarter of a percent. So whatever you add on term deposit or savings in a bank, I, I imagine when we get out of lockdown, you're going to be quite surprised as to what the interest you're going to get on on the cash in the bank. And so it would it, it would depend on your overall um, financial position. Um, but there, you know stock market is an alternative um, we, we usually say pay off debt first but if that's a house debt then you know that's a natural course of of of, um, of living is having a mortgage if you've got multiple mortgages that's a different conversation again so it's yeah we have to individualize the the advice to, to to the person rather than just giving blanket yeah pay off debt but you know paying off debt's not a bad thing yeah and and, and what kind of debt is is the crucial question to that because credit card debt a high purchase debt and home loan debt are completely different ball games, really. After pay debt, all those different options, and um, yeah. So hey, Michelle, we've got another um, poll result. What positive positives have come out of this lockdown? And astounding, eighty six percent have said spending more time with family. Ah, and, yay! That's awesome, and I hope that continues. I really do. Um, we've had some really good responses for that, actually. 71% um, said saving um, more than they normally would. 57% yep. um, said working on my business and not in it. Um, had attended webinars and upskilled, etc. Realized the value, 57% have realized the value of technology. 43% have got some jobs done around the house. Good on you. <laughs> actually, it's been quite hard to keep the motivation levels up, really. It started off with a hiss and a roar and then it changed quite dramatically. Um, and 14% said working from home. And, and I'm sure that, that low percentage on that will be um, a lot of parents out there. I'm sure it's been quite a difficult time to juggle um, working from home. Yeah, agreed. 
Yeah, so that's really cool to hear, spending more time with family. And, and to be honest, I'm not sure what's happening out at Lake Hood there, Michelle, but um, in the neck of my woods, I've never seen so many people walking or a biking or hanging out together. It's awesome. Yeah, no, families, families cycling around the lake or walking in groups or whatever. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of them out and about. It's great. I think it's just given us all, you know, away from everything else, a little bit of time of pause. You get so wrapped up in going to work and doing the week to week jobs that you do. It's just given everybody time to reflect a little bit. And I think, you know, as a positive, I think we'll come out of this as, as better people you know, and, and in a better place eventually. And I know that's all, that's not for those that have lost their jobs. It might seem like at the moment it's, you know, um, hell. But I think, you know, we'll, we'll work through this together, hopefully. And, and like, not to add a money spin to, um, to this, but spending quality time with people doesn't actually cost a lot of money. Yeah, agreed. And, and I think that's been probably pretty evident during lockdown the old board games, going for a walk, just talking to each other. Like, yeah, it's, it's not a massive excessive holiday or, or shopping or, uh, yeah. Um, another, another poll in, um, which is a cool one, now that we're on the topic, is have you thought about your next holiday, depending on travel restrictions, et cetera, and where will it be? So what should, this is a really cool result. So 63% have said South Island. So that's uh, really one cool. of our, one of our um, analysts um, was speaking. Don't quote me on the figures because I'm I'm sort of just making them up. But she she spoke with the tourism board or some big tourism um, outfit, and 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 the amount of money that we as Kiwis spend on I'm not Kiwi, but I like to think I am. The Kiwis <laughs> spend going overseas equates to the same amount of money that we get in from tourism. So in theory, if we all spent that money that we spent overseas in New Zealand, we'd be net net the same. So um, I, I'm not saying people will, are likely to put overseas trips off rather than, you know, um, just put them off rather than spending that money in New Zealand. But we've all got a part to play. I'm not saying that we're going to, um, you know, save the tourism industry. But um, I think by traveling locally. Another article I read, which was really interesting, is that us Kiwis don't want to pay for those experiences, though. You know, we, we're, we're reluctant to pay $500 to go on a, a, a jet boat ride you know, when it's in our backyard. And I think that the tourism industry is going to have to adapt um, in order to, to encourage us to go and do those things. You know, I, I want to take the boys kayaking around Abel Tasman, but to do that's going to cost me short of $1,000 for half a day and lunch. You know, it's, it's a lot of money. And, and, and so, I, you know, I'm, I'm all for people making money. I don't, you know, people shouldn't do business at a loss, but, you know, th I think that the tourism industry is going to have to look at alternatives to get us to encourage us to, um, to, to get out and, and visit these places. Yeah, and I, I think tourism industry, but all of us are going to be reviewing our businesses and understand, are we doing things right? This is the best way to do it. You know, there's so many different options out there. And um, our next poll question that you guys will have in front of you will be about how do we support local businesses? So I'm interested to see the responses from that. Um, just have another question, Michelle. Really good question. A lot of people will be thinking about this. Would it be sensible to go back to post-lockdown spending habits or rein it in and increase savings? Mm, I think there'll probably be two types of people. There'll be those that go out and spend. And I feel sorry. Well, I don't feel sorry for, but the, all, the, all the restaurants and takeaways next weekend, I think they're going to have a pretty fun busy. time of it. <laughs> Um, everybody's, you know, all the takeaway on my on my ex budget personal budget expense was through the roof. More money than I anticipated that we spent on it. I'll certainly be getting a takeaway next Friday. <laughs> um, <laughs> but then you know, there'll be those that, that um, rein it in. I think. I think there'll be the there'll be the two camps. Yeah, and I think as we mentioned earlier, um, a lot of us have a really important part to play here in supporting local. So if you can, definitely do it and, it um, and encourage it. Um, and also, if you have saved a lot of money and you've got some goals in place, well, keep on that track because that's excellent. And, and hopefully, you know, that means that you can meet all your goals sooner rather than later. Now, how do we support local businesses? 100% have said shop locally. Excellent. Excellent. And I really hope that that continues. I've noticed on Facebook, there's been a lot more promotions of um, social media pages. There's been um, a lot of people, uh, for, for most of produced a whole list of all um, hospitality um, 
you know, restaurants, cafes, takeaway, um, which is excellent with their phone numbers. So yeah, the, point, the point that Verity made when we were talking earlier before the webinar, um, I, I didn't realize this, but some businesses, so Stony Creek, for example, if you shop with them online, you can allocate which, um, which store you want to support. So Stony Creek is sold at hunting and fishing and at, uh, outdoor adventure. Um, and, and you can allocate, so you, you're shopping at a, a national level, but you're, you're allocating the sale to, to someone more locally. And, and I'm not sure how many businesses do that, but it's certainly worth um, looking to see whether, the, the, if you're buying something online that you can't get in town, that can you support the business locally? I thought that was yeah, and, and Michelle, I didn't actually even know that that was an option. So that's awesome. And I would be suggesting all business owners to talk to their national suppliers and see if they can get that option if they don't already. Yeah. No, agreed. That's how we support local. 78% um, said word of mouth. Tell someone about a great local business. Now, you cannot underestimate the power of word of mouth, especially in a local community like this. So really, really keep that up, I think. Um, another question, Michelle, as a business owner, how can I get people to spend more through my business when people are spending less? Now, we're not telling people to spend less um, and we're not telling people to spend more. There's going to be some people here that need to, to really step it up and help with the spending, you know. Um, there's going to be some people here that can't spend, they currently lost their job, so we can't expect much from them. But those that, that are in a, in a position that they can need to. But one thing we, we did talk about earlier is I think individually we need to review our personal spending and, and anything that's spent outside of the region, we need to think seriously about can we spend that in the region? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, for me, innovation, you know, um, people thinking outside the box, how they can help people, how they can serve people. And the other thing is customer service. Um, you know, it's that low cost, no cost. What can you add to your service, um, which is value added, that doesn't cost you anything? Um, and you know it's it, it, just those additional extras um, and, and, and that will be you know will ensure that people keep coming back to you or come to you over and above yeah completely someone has just written in which is I think is awesome us in Ashburton could have a weekend in Meffin walking the tracks riding your bike etc one night in a motel in Meffin not that expensive and easy to access from Ashburton whoever suggested that that's excellent and um that couldn't be supporting local more than, than ever. And Meffin's an amazing place. So definitely, it, it, but it's not just Meffin. There's so many like just Geraldine, um, Mount, the Mount Summers up the back, the tracks up there, the Mount Summers store, Peel Forest. There's some beautiful spots around. Yeah, very, very lucky. We're very lucky that you, could, you can holiday here and probably be in one of the nicest places in the world. <laughs> yeah, we've got an amazing region. Well, um, that is the, that's all the polls. Um, and so far, that's all the answers. If anyone's got any questions, um, quickly submit them. Otherwise, we'll wrap up. But just a bit of a recap is I, cash is king at the moment. So be, be very wise about um, what you do with your cash. Um, talk to your suppliers. Talk to your customers. Be open. And enjoy moving back to level three next week. Um, Make sure you're following all the government rules. We don't want to be moving backwards. Um, support all your local businesses that are doing takeaway next week, which is um, most, I think most are, from what I can see promoted around Facebook. Yep. They're going to be, they're, I think the fish and chip shops are going to be pretty busy on the first night. But, um, so, but continue to support them. Don't just make it a one-week wonder. Yeah, and I've got a note here from, from a lady, um, so she's from Methan, and lo local businesses, both hotels and restaurants, are currently looking for ways to attract people to come here, advertising campaigns to bring together all the things on offer. Um, and I think that's a good idea too, yeah. I, I mean, I noticed a, an article from um, uh, Mid Canterbury, I have to remind me the name of it, the, the tourism mid Canterbury people uh, on ways that they can attract people to the region. And they were asking for ideas on um, you know, how they can market themselves. Experience mid Canterbury, I beg your pardon. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. And so so that, they were looking for ideas. On how. And that's really important for all the businesses, you know, especially the hospitality businesses to jump on that bandwagon and get part of that promotion. So if you're not already, you should be talking to um, experience mid Canterbury. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Great yeah. idea. Yeah, excellent. 
Super. Shall we bring Janice in if we've no more questions? And last call. Yeah, questions. welcome back, Janice. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thanks so much, Kirsty and Michelle, for this amazing webinar. Um, and thanks also to those of you who tuned in. You posed some really great questions and I really enjoyed um, doing the polls and reading what you guys um, answered in the polls. Um, I hope you learned some useful information about um, business continuity, cash flow and KiwiSaver. Aren't we lucky to have these trusted advisors right here in Ashburnham District? If you have any questions, please do get in contact directly with Kirsty or Michelle. Um, and we would be very grateful if you could please fill out our survey after this webinar is finished. You will be provided with a button to click. Um, if you haven't got time now, we will send you the survey link in a day's time. Also provided in that email will be a link to our Ashburn and District Council webinar series so you can watch it on demand along with others. Also go along to the Ashburn and District Council Facebook page to see what other webinars we have in store for the rest of the month and ones we've recorded previously. Um, thanks again and stay safe in your bubbles. And thank you Janice thank for you inviting us. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Stay yeah, keep up, keep up all the good work Janice. <laughs> thanks Kirsty. Thanks Michelle. It's been a pleasure. See ya.